Hi folks, hope you're okay today. <coughs> it's good to be with you, uh, love to everybody. Um, I'd just like us to turn to um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and uh, it's good to be with you. Don't forget to check out my website jasonbirdspreacher.com and uh, love to everybody out there. I'm not well, I've been out preaching today but I'm still not fully recovered from this flu it's been with me four weeks uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 it says uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 um, Was it chapter 10? Are they ministers of Christ? Verse 23. I speak as a fool and more, in labours more, abundant in stripes, above measure, in prisons more, frequent in deaths often. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh unto me daily, the care of all the churches. And in that passage, Paul has been beaten for the faith many, many times. He suffered many, many times for the gospel. I was out uh, today and you can see the video in Longsight preaching and there were two Christians listening to the preaching and I got to debate about 10-15 Muslims and at the end of the discussion uh, they got upset they were getting angry because they couldn't answer my questions but when I started preaching if you watch the video I was just preaching Christ crucified and that he rose again I was quoting scripture and proclaiming scripture and when I was proclaiming scripture somebody came to me a Muslim and asked me a question, has the Bible changed? And he asked me that to silence me. And then I engaged with him uh, in debate. But it all started because I was just preaching a simple gospel from the Word of God. So at the end of it all, the Muslims got angry and then they all stormed off. And all I did was just keep to the Bible and then use their own literature, their own hadiths, their own Quran to, to refute them. So... A guy came on a bike and he said, don't you need to change your tactic? I watched the watched everything. I said, okay. He said, when Paul went to uh, Areopagus, uh, Acts, he, he kind of ingratiated themselves uh, to the people before he actually preached. And he said, you're in a Muslim area, you need to ingratiate yourself. Don't mention Jesus is the son of God, but just mention Jesus is a prophet. Fortunately, I had two Christian guys who were mature, who I respected and who I know have done missionary work around Manchester and, and, and are two guys that I really respect. They'd heard my preaching and they said, well, he preached the cross and he preached the resurrection. And he said it's an offence to the Jew, the cross, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's a scandal to the Greek. And basically that's what I want to say is, you know, today I prayed for a guy's back. A guy was driving past in in uh, south side of Manchester, past Longside, and he saw me preaching. And he got out of his car, he came to the table and he said, my back's in pain, can you pray for me? I prayed for him and he said, you know, he said it, it was hurting and I was in pain, but he said it's like 50% healed and I just feel a lot, lot better, thank you. And he went down the road and he was telling everybody that he got healed. 
there were a couple of Christians who needed talking to, I encouraged them. Um, there were people who were asking questions and, and were asking deep questions and I, I was talking to them one to one. Uh, that was over at Leversham. I had a table out and literature and people could go and they could go and take literature and people, so many people have taken literature over the years. So many people have taken Bibles and literature, they've taken tons of stuff and it's helped many, many people. And uh, I had the table out and people came and, and you know, took, a, took, took, took some literature uh, there, talked to people one to one, prayed f for somebody. Uh, and that is one aspect of my own ministry. Sometimes I've helped homeless people, sometimes I've counselled people, sometimes uh, I've answered people's questions, sometimes I've just let give them literature off the table, and that is one aspect of my ministry. But the other aspect of my ministry is street preaching. And I'm an all-time street preacher. I preach the wrath of God as well as the love of God. I preach the law of God that we're sinners. I preach repentance, and I preach Christ rose again, and you need to trust in him. And I preach a heaven and a hell. You don't hear preaching in the church about heaven and hell these days. All these churches that are into healing and divine healing and, the, and God's doing great miracles. You don't hear churches in those churches preaching heaven and hell. That is the gospel. The gospel is that we're saved from the wrath to come. We're saved from hell. So I preach a, a true ministry. I preach a right ministry. I preach the gospel. And... When you preach that gospel and you preach the word of God, it offends people and they don't like it and they react. And what tends to happen is I get, I often get crowds. I get crowds of people coming. And people might say whatever they want. They might say, you know, is it worth it with that heckler or is it worth it with this or with that? But, you know, my ministry is street preaching as well as one-to-one -one conversation. And when you're preaching, by nature, it is confrontational. You're preaching the truth, and when you're preaching the truth, it exposes the error. You know? And I'm preaching things that you don't hear in church. You don't hear in the churches, even sound churches. You don't hear the wrath of God. You don't hear hell. You don't hear the Ten Commandments being preached. You don't see preachers standing up against crowds who are trying to heckle. And, and the preacher just standing up and proclaiming the word of God. And pastors having courage to stand against a crowd who are trying to pull you down. The pastors are in the churches. Cowards, many of them. They're just cowards. They're getting sour, and they, but they're not coming out. But I'm preaching and sometimes I get hostile crowds. And I'm standing up proclaiming the word of God. And that is part of my ministry. John Wesley, when he walked into a town. Well, well, sorry, when Paul walked into town. He didn't have coffee and cakes. When Paul went into a town, he sh the town sh was shaken up. The town, either people were converted or they ran him out of town and beat him up. I'm not kidding you. There are some times I've gone into an area where it's literally God has shaken that area up. We went to Preston and the whole town was coming out listening to the preaching. I went, we went to Nelson and the whole town was coming out to listen to the preaching. Even on Saturday, the half of Manchester was standing, n n exaggeration, but there was countless people standing watching the preaching because of the heckler coming. But it wasn't contrived. That is my ministry. And in the midst of that ministry, God can work. In the midst of that ministry, he can convert people. So... You might have a ministry of coffee and cakes where you just go and give people coffee and cakes. That's, up to, that's, that's for you, right? I have a ministry where there are times when I've taken stuff in at the table or the people, the homeless people have come and I've helped them. We had a, I was talking to a prostitute and someone was mocking me on the internet about this. And she came to me, uh, walked past me. She had nothing on her feet. And I was, I was, uh, it really touched me. So I, I just felt 
in my heart to ask her this question. I said, do you want to use my phone? She said, how did you know I wanted to use my phone? I said, here, use my phone. She got my phone and she rang somebody up. And she said, I'll meet you in such a place. Then she offered to buy me food because she got a credit card. I said, I don't want no food, I'm all right. She had nothing on her feet, not because she was poor. It was because she was not well. She was not well in the head. She was not well. I said, I'm here if you need me, if you need anything. And she said, no, thanks, I needed to phone that person out. I can go and meet them now. So she went to go and meet them. So my, having my phone was there for her. I put it at her disposal to help her. There are homeless people and people in Manchester who, who come up to me regularly to talk to me, to just have a one-on-one -on -one chat. There are pensioners that come up to me, one-on-one -on -one chat. There are youth that come up to me. There are many, many youth see me in Manchester and they come up to me time and time again. They come up to me and ask questions because I'm well known because I'm doing it all the time. So you can't judge my ministry just on preaching because a big crowd comes and it gets all, all uh, rowdy and think, oh, that's his ministry. You don't see half of my ministry. But when these crowds come, God is working in that. And we, you know, so... Every time I ask people to pray for me, every time, without fail, I, I send texts out, pray for me. I can guarantee that if I go out preaching, there'll be a crowd. Something will happen and there'll be a crowd. And my desire is that in that crowd, the gospel will break through and people will get saved. And all I can do is continue to proclaim the truth. And if I get a heckler that won't let me proclaim the truth, but follows me around, I'll take it. I don't mind. Let them follow me around. So long as the people can see, I'm shouting out the word of God. And I'm not, I'm not backing down. And they can see that I'm, 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 I'm standing up for what I believe. That's a testimony itself. So... Paul was battered when he went into towns. He was beaten when he went into towns. He was whipped when he went into towns. So what kind of gospel, what kind of ministry have you got if you're not getting persecuted? What kind of ministry have you got if it's just coffee and cake and it's all nice and it's all lovely, but you're not getting persecuted? What kind of what kind of a uh, ministry is it? I don't agree with these people who go out purposely to gold people, purposely to get a crowd, purposely go out to cause offence. I don't agree with that. But I believe that the Bible has the power and I believe the Holy Spirit uh, with the word of God has the power and the truth has the power to convict people. And when the truth is proclaimed, there will be a kickback. There will be people who will persecute you. There will be people that will get angry with you. And when they get angry with you in street preaching, you get a crowd. And when you get a crowd, that is the opportunity to keep lifting the Lord up. And the modern evangelicals might not like it. Evangelicals might not like it. But let's look at history. Paul was a street preacher. Jesus was a street preacher. Jonah was a street preacher. Elijah was a street preacher. Jeremiah was a street preacher. They were nearly all street preachers. Um, Wycliffe was a street preacher Wesley was a street preacher Whitfield was a street preacher even Spurgeon was a street preacher the, the great awakening of the Methodist revival was street preaching whenever there is a movement of God whenever there is a I, Google, I challenge you to find any movement of God any movement of the Holy Spirit that has been a real movement of God anywhere in the history of the church I challenge you to find me that preaching is not at the heart of it. You will find that preaching by none is at the heart of it. Why? Because of this. Because it's biblical. And many of the preachers are often eccentrics. Many of the preachers don't fit into the normal mould. So you can't judge every street preacher say they've got to be this or they've got to do it that way. Everybody's different. 
and and if people want nice ministries and do nice ministry, do the Ray Comfort Living Waters kind of nice ministry and do that, and people can do that. That's up to them. You know, I'm not knocking that. People want to do the Alpha Course, go for it, or Christianity Expo Alpha Course. I pastor churches. I, I I'm all into that. I'm into children's work, youth work. I'm into um. I mean, I love to do children's work, youth work. Uh, I've run lots of youth work, children's work. I'm into Christianity Explored and Alpha. I don't mind putting on courses where you, you, you feed people uh, and you get people around. I'm into empowering people with their gifts. I like to encourage people. I've passed the churches where I've encouraged people to use their gifts. So I'm all into encouraging people to use their gifts and encouraging people to to uh to to serve in the way that god has called them i believe other people have gifts as well uh for example uh different people were being used today i had my table out uh, in in, in levisham and there was this lady walked past from romania or somewhere and she was giving out tracks and she was really good and god was using her she stopped to talk to me and then she went off doing giving her tracks she had a ministry that she was doing and god was using her and i praise god for that and then i met two guys over at Longsight, and they were guys who were giving out CDs, and I praise God for them. They are gifted in what they're doing, and so, you know, we all edify the body of Christ, but preaching and street preaching is an important ministry. And the church does, and the, the thing is, the church, excuse me, the church doesn't value it or recognize it or support it. And I can only be what I am. I can only be what I am. And I'm a street preacher. And he says in the word of God here. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. He says we preach Christ crucified. It doesn't say we do coffee and cakes. Or even we do healing. It says, we preach Christ crucified. There has to be a strong proclamation of the word of God. There has to be a proclamation of the cross. There has to be a proclamation of heaven and hell and sin and repentance. There has to be. There has to be ministers and preachers who, who herald the word of God and cry out, repent. But Jesus went out, he did healing, but he also preached. He also preached the word of God. He not only did one-to-one -one with people, he not only healed people, but he did preaching. When Paul went around, he did healing, he did uh, compassionate ministries, but he preached the word of God. He preached. So the, Christ the Christian guy or the guy came today who said, oh, well, you've got to ingratiate yourself with people and you can't preach in a Muslim area that Jesus is the son of God, but preach that he's a prophet and just torn it down and and just like get to know them and, and basically you know buy it buy everybody a kebab basically that's what he's saying in, in an effect buy them all a kebab they'll all like you and they'll listen to your message of course they will of course they will and god can use that but god uses it, it, the primary means as well is preaching the word of god and i'm called to preach the word of god and you know and I'm on, I've been on fire today. And, you know, God blesses me in it. And it's, it's messy. It's messy when you preach the gospel. It's messy when you stand up on a stepladder and proclaim the word of God. It's messy when you have a Bible and you're walking up and down and you're preaching the truth and, and, and people are thinking, what's going on? It's messy. But in the messiness, God uses it. And, and when he uses me, he seems to turn things upside down. And that's my ministry. I do one-to-one. -one. I do compassionate ministries. I even pray for people. <laughs> but I'm a preacher of the word of God. And I'll lift up Christ and share the gospel. And it's not going to be fashionable. And it's not going to be popular. And so long as my heart is sincere before the Lord. And so long as I open the word of God. And proclaim the truth of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. So long as I do that then you go and do your ministry to this guy who's on the bike. 
You want to go and do your ministry. You go and do your ministry the way you want to do it. But I will do my ministry the way I want to do it and the way I'm called to do it. And that is part of that ministry is to preach the word of God. And it's not going to be popular. But at the end of the day, God does use it and he, God is blessing it. And, you know, in time, I believe, as I continue to preach around the nation, in every town and village, eventually, the blessings will fall on this land as we chip away at the secularism, as we chip away and we continue to proclaim Christ. We're, we're not only uh, preaching as street preachers, we're not only preaching to the lost, we're preaching to the church because the church doesn't want to hear about hell it doesn't want to hear about repentance. It doesn't want to hear about sin and turning away from sin and live a holy life. It doesn't. The church doesn't want to hear that. So as street preachers, we're not only preaching the gospel, we're also preaching the word of God to awaken the church to be the holy church of Christ and to be faithful to the word of God. That's why street preaching isn't popular. That's why street preaching isn't liked. It's not because it's outmoded or it's offensive. It, it's the fact of the fact of the matter is that when street preaching's done right, it's proclaiming the truth, and very often the church doesn't want to hear the truth. If she really believed, if the church really believed in hell, I wouldn't be have to do street preaching. There'd be tens of thousands of Christians out doing evangelism. And there'd be loads of different evangelism things going on, more than we could ever imagine. But they're not. When I was in Longsight, there were two Christians who were in Longsight giving out literature. They're not from Longsight, they're from miles and miles away. When I was in Leversham, there was one Christian lady walking up giving tracts. In Leversham, there are mosques being built all over that area. It is absolutely flooded. Uh, as a Muslim area. In Longsight, it was full of moss. It was a Muslim area. And there were two Jehovah's Witnesses stood at a stand. When I go in Manchester, it's full of Jehovah's Witnesses. Every week. So, Paul was persecuted. He was persecuted for preaching. And I don't believe that you go out to a, offend people purposely. But if you faithfully preach the word of God, you will be offensive. You will be a stench to people or you'll be a blessing. And that's preaching and that's street preaching. And it's biblical. Paul said, we preach Christ crucified. He didn't say, we do coffee and cakes or we do healing. We do healing ministries. No, he said, we preach Christ crucified. That's what he said. And if you did a study on preaching, it is central to the it is central to the evangelistic program, because only with the street preacher are you going to hear heaven and hell. You're not going to hear heaven and hell from modern evangelicals. You're not going to hear heaven and hell from ninety nine percent of evangelicals. Ninety nine percent of evangelists even will not mention hell, but a street preacher will say heaven and hell. A street preacher will say repent. A street preacher will say, here is the law, you're committing sin, you need to repent. A street preacher say, will say, Jesus took the wrath that we deserved. Most evangelists won't say that. Most ministries won't say that. The church won't say that. But the street preacher will. So st street preaching is at the heart of evangelistic enterprise because it proclaims the truth of the word of God. And at the end of the day, people are saved not by feelings or emotion, the saved by the truth of the word of God. If you go on my website, jasonburspreacher.com, um, if you go uh, on the main page, there's a brilliant video of Go Speak by the group Go Speak. Brilliant video about street preaching. Two hours long, but it, it really is a good exposition of what I'm all about. And then if you go to, um, if you go to Jeremiah Crime Ministries, if you want to, understand my mind and my heart and my ministry and what I'm about if you go to Jeremiah Crime Ministries that's where I'm at theologically and in what I'm about in preaching the gospel now I 
I have a document called Royal Blood Ministries and it's more to work with evangelicals wider. Um, like to work with um, charismatics, work with Arminians and work with other people, you know. But if I didn't do that, but I believe I should do, I believe we should be united with other Christians. If I didn't believe that, if I wasn't working, trying to work with other Christian Zionists and charismatics, if I weren't trying to do that, then my natural empath, my natural inclination was to, would be to move towards working with Calvinists. And as Calvinists, we're very strong on preaching because we believe it's the work of God. We're very strong on preaching the word of God. And Jeremiah Crime Ministries is the kind of ministry that I believe in that I would go towards if it weren't for the fact that even though I'm a Calvinist, I want to work with other Christians because I believe that's right. But the Jeremiah Crime Ministries is, is the kind of heart is the kind of what I'm all about really deep deep within my heart is that's the ministry that is the vision of where I'm at personally it doesn't mean to say everybody else has to be it doesn't mean to say anybody who joins me has to be like that but I'm just saying that that's my heart and it's not going to be popular it's, you're not going to be popular if you follow the Jeremiah Crime Ministries kind of ethos of street preaching you just ain't going to be popular. You ain't going to be valued by the church. The church is not going to value. Evangelists aren't going to value. Christians aren't going to value. Everybody ain't going to value you, period. Everybody's going to be into healing. They're going to be into this. They're going to be into that. But they ain't going to value street preaching. It just ain't going to happen. That very few people value Jeremiah Crime Ministries. Yet to me, they're one of the best ministries around. Because they are doing what is right. They're preaching the word of God. Jeff Rose is doing, to me, is bang on. He is doing it right. He's doing everything the, the, the way it should be done. He conducts himself in a brilliant way. His people conduct themselves in a brilliant way. They have good ethos. They have sound theology. To me, they're bang on. They're the humble, gracious, godly men that are proclaiming the word of God. And, you know, so what I'm saying... The, the whole shot on top of this video really is the guy comes along says should you be doing street preaching like this and whatever and basically he didn't say it in, in, in exact words but he was basically saying you know just chill out buy him a kebab and don't mention Jesus is the son of God and basically what I'm trying to say is Paul got persecuted so even if you did buy people coffee and cakes and even if you did win nice to them once you present the truth that there is a heaven and hell and that you have to repent and you're a sinner and you need Jesus, you will get a reaction of persecution. Period. And, and there's a need to proclaim the truth of the word of God. To proclaim the word of God. Paul says in Thessalonians, you know, our word came not, it came in power. It, you know, it came in power. And he's on about preaching in the village, in the town. Came with power. You know, so you, you can't exegete it away. The Bible clearly teaches. I challenge anybody. The Bible clearly teaches street preaching. It's all over the place in the Bible. And if you've got a problem with street preaching, then you've got a problem with with the truth because I can guarantee if anybody out there has a problem with street preaching I can guarantee you're a wishy-washy evangelical I guarantee it you won't like the preaching of hell you won't like the doctrine of holiness you you won't like the doctrine of repentance you won't, you won't like the doctrines that challenge you you'll talk about anything else but not the doctrines that will challenge you but if you're into preaching if you're into street preaching I can guarantee that you'll be walking in the right way doctrinally. So, preaching is at the heart of the church's life. The Paul said, preach the word in season out of season. The churches don't want preaching now. They want uh, children's services, youth services, healing services. They want any other service. They want rapping service. They want all sorts of bungee jumping service. But they don't want preaching of the word, generally speaking. The pure word of God expounded. When that happens, the, the church is secularizing and the church is weakening. So preaching is central in the church's life and preaching is central in the evangelistic life. There should be a, a strong 
preaching ministry uh, in in a ministry where where you're trying to do evangelism. And if there isn't, then it's not ultimately it's there's a weakness in that ministry because all the claims of being saved, all the claims of healing, and all the rest of it. If they're not here, if they're not here in hell and heaven, if they're not here in repentance, if they're not here in sin and the need for salvation, then in the end, it's all hairy fairy nonsense. It's just wishy washy nonsense. At the end of the day, if they're not hearing these truths, then people coming in repentance and faith to Jesus Christ, and then their lives changing, not saying they're being saved or healed, and then they go to a church where there's rapping, and they're not changed then it's worthless, it's pointless. You know? So, I, I believe we should walk in love, be gracious in love. I believe that we should be gracious and, and, and treat people in a, a gracious way. But I also believe that we mustn't compromise the Word of God. We mustn't compromise the truth. We must proclaim the Word of God. And I'm going to continue to do that. So, I'm not going to be popular. It doesn't mean to say I do it right all the time. I make mistakes. But whether you like it or not, God uses me. He uses me in a remarkable way. I don't understand it, but when I ask people to pray for me, when I send texts out, I can guarantee if I do that and I go on street preach, crowds come. God be the glory. He gets the glory, but he brings the crowds. And when the crowds come, sometimes they're rowdy. And modern evangelicals might look on and not like it and think, oh, oh what's this all about? Where, where, where is the honour of God in all this? They might be judgmental. But God has brought those crowds and those crowds need ministering to, do, ministering to them. So rather than be critical, it should be you getting alongside me, standing with me, supporting me, and then getting amongst these people and you talking to them one on one. That's what I think. So, here endeth the lesson. I went on and on about it. But, and, and these people, what makes me laugh is these people who are critical, you know, they're not out every week. I'm out every week I'm, I'm not only out every week when I'm at my full strength I'm out nearly every day many many times I'm in the rain many times I'm in the snow many times I'm preaching in the rain I'm preaching in the snow many times I'm preaching and I'm getting shouted at mocked sometimes threatened many times I'm in difficult areas where the gospels hardly ever preached you know, I preached in Presswich, it's a Muslim, area, a Jewish area, very difficult place to preach. I preach in Muslim areas that are very difficult to preach. So people can criticise and they can say whatever they want, but what are you doing? Are you in the rain? Are you in the snow? Are you putting in the hours? Are you doing that? And when you've done that, then you can come to me and then you can criticise me. Then you can say to me, you know what? I don't agree with the way you do ministry. And the other thing as well, unless you come and serve with me and pick up my table and put the table out and 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 then uh, give out tracts and talk to people, unless you put the hours in where you're showing that you're humble and that you're a servant, that you don't want to just dominate and be a teacher, but you want to be a servant and you put the table out and you and you you you're humble and you're gracious and you you serve and you do that for a number of months and then you turn around to me and you say, you know what, Jay, I don't think I agree with uh, the way you did this or your way you did that, then that's great because you've earned the right to criticise. But many of these people, like the guy who comes on the bike and he criticises, he hasn't earned the right to. You've got to earn the right by showing that you're coming with the right attitude yourself that you're coming with an attitude of humility. And very often these people who come and they might criticize, they're not doing any evangelism very often. Very often they're in wishy-washy evangelicals that don't preach sin 
and great uh, assault and hell and hev heaven and hell they don't preach the wrath of God they don't preach the Ten Commandments you know when you've put in the hours when you're preaching in the snow when you're preaching in the rain when you're preaching to 30 50 to 100 people and some of them are, are really nasty and, and you're doing it on your own you've not got anybody to back you up and there's a massive crowd and, and they're, they're throwing abuse at you, but you have to keep your cool. You see if you keep your cool, you see if you keep your calm in the midst of that conflict, in the midst of that difficulty. You know, people can say whatever they want, they can be critical, but at the end of the day, unless you're willing to put the hand to the plough, you know, remain silent. You know, for better or for worse, whether I make mistakes, whether I'm good or bad at what I do, whatever, at the end of the day, I'm willing to go to Saudi Arabia and preach right in the midst of Saudi Arabia. I'm willing to go and preach in Africa. I'm willing to go and preach anywhere for the gospel. That's the tenacity that I have. I have tenacity for all my mistakes, for all my weaknesses, for all my failings. And we all have our weaknesses, we all have our failings, we all can make mistakes, we can all have false motives sometimes, sometimes we can uh, get it wrong sometimes, whatever. Sometimes we can be broken, whatever. We're all like that, nobody's different. But for all that, there is a, a iron steel tenacity that God's put in my heart. He's put a tenacity to keep going in season and out of season. And, and, not, and, and nothing stops me and I've had tremendous opposition in the proclamation of the gospel and nothing stops me and it doesn't stop me because I want God to be glorified I want the truth to proclaim and I want souls to be saved and I want them to know the love that Christ has given me so, I'm sorry for going on, that's, that's in answer to this guy on the bike. If you want to know what I'm on about, go and watch the video. It's the video before this one, it's on Longsight. I put Longsight, I put uh, street, street, uh, Muslims Debate Street Preacher in Longsight. And you can go and listen to it. And then you'll know the background to this video. You don't see the guy coming and having a chat with me, it came after the video, so you can... You can listen to the video and then you can listen to his criticism and then you can listen to what I have to say. At the end of the day, my friend, I'm full of the joy of the Lord. I'm full of the fire of God. I'm full of the grace of God. And I'm excited and encouraged. And God is encouraging me and strengthening me. And he's blessing what I'm doing. And and so I'm full of the joy of the Lord. But this is a, this is a broad side, basically. This is a broad side to anybody who wants to criticize me in my ministry this is the broad side I don't mind taking criticism I'm, 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 I'm willing to be humbled and corrected but I know what I'm to do and I know why I'm doing it and I know how to do it sometimes I might make mistakes but I know what I'm doing okay I'm there to proclaim not my opinions are there to proclaim the gospel and the gospel is powerful it's dynamite and when you just preach the gospel and let loose the gospel it convicts it converts and it and and also at the same time it offends and um, yeah so let's pray father we thank you for your love father we don't want to be obnoxious preachers who are just winding people up and upsetting people we want to be people of faith and love and uh, people of the word of God. And, and at the end of the day, Lord, it's about you and just lifting you up. And Lord, as we lift you up in the nation, as we proclaim the word of God in this nation, the enemy is not going to like it. He's going to roar. He's going to come out. He's going to try and intimidate. He's going to try and pull us down. But Lord, we don't fight in the flesh. We go to the heavenlies. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And we go into the heavenlies and we, we, we cry for blessing and power upon the preachers of today in this land. We pray for all the preachers that are going out today. Lord, uh, they're not respected, uh, they're not valued as they go out street preaching. 
But Father, you know their ministries, you know the work that they're doing, and we pray that you bless them, Lord. And you would use them mightily and that souls would get saved. And Father, I pray that you'd raise up an army of new preachers, street preachers that will want to proclaim your word and proclaim the word of God. And I thank you for Jeremiah Cry Ministries and the work that they do. Bless them and use them for your glory, Lord. And Father, I just pray that you would just uh, be glorified in our ministries, in our life. And Father, we just pray that you draw all men to you, men and women and boys and girls, that you draw them to yourself. That you bring them into your grace, that you bring them into your love. That, Father, you'd be magnified and glorified and that you would be honoured, Lord. For you are a mighty God, a mighty Saviour. So, Father, we just magnify you today. Forgive us any pride, any selfishness, anything that's not right, any false motives, Lord. You know us, Lord, yet you love us. And even when we are not right or fully what we should be, you, you still love us and you still use us, Lord. You use Samson, you use David. Lord, you use mighty men who made mistakes, Lord, but you still use them, Lord. They were still your men. They were still your people, Lord. And Lord, whatever mistakes I've made, whatever failings I've made, I'm still your man. I'm still man, God's man. I'm still your servant, Lord. I'm still your chosen vessel to serve you, Lord. And, and Father, you've not let me go. You've not uh, let me fall by the wayside. You've filled me with your grace. You've filled me with your love. And Father, you have called me to proclaim your word. And I thank you for that, Lord. And I pray that the remaining years that I have in my life, that, Father, I just pour it out for you, that I proclaim your word, I proclaim your truth, I proclaim you, Lord, I lift you up, Lord. And I just bring glory to your name, that your name is proclaimed, as your word is proclaimed. So, Lord, I praise you and give you the glory and magnify your name today. I say that thou art the King, thou art the Lord, thou art the Saviour. And we praise you and worship you today. So Lord, I pray for all my brothers and sisters today who look at street preaching and they tut and they judge and they, they, they just don't agree with it deep down in their hearts, Lord. But I just pray for them that you bless their ministries, Lord, that you would anoint them and bless them and give them favour in their ministries, Lord. But I pray that you would awaken them to the dangers of modern evangelicalism that really is wishy-washy, that is just not proclaiming the truth, Lord. And in the end, we'll be secularised for all the spirituality that they waffle on about, they will be secularized because, Lord, they haven't risen up preachers of the gospel. They haven't risen up uh, people who preach the word of God in season and out of season. But instead, they've gone for things and, and watered things down, Lord. And, and I just pray that you'd awaken, awaken them, Lord. They mean well. They, they want to reach out. They want to share your love. But, Lord, they're weak in the doctrine. They're weak in sound teaching, Lord. They're weak in the proclamation of your word and and lord we need each other and we need to use our gifts and build each other up we need to go forward together uh, in ministry and and build each other up lord and lord i just pray lord i don't want to to cause division i don't want to uh, criticize anybody else's ministry lord but lord you give me a ministry to proclaim your word and I just pray you give me strength and you give all the street preachers and all those people who feel called to preach your word. Jeff Rose and many others, Lord. I pray that every single one of us, that you would give us the strength to lift you up, the strength to proclaim your name and the strength, Lord, to, to lift you up, Lord, for your glory. So, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your goodness. Lord, it's been good today. It's been great to be out. It's been great to be preaching. It's been great to talk to people. And Father, I pray all the blessing and glory go to you. And Lord, I pray that many people will be blessed today. Lord, I just give you all that was done today. It seemed impossible. But Lord, I pray that you'd work in people's lives and save souls through the work that was done today. And all the evangelists, whether they're street preachers or not, all the evangelists that I know, Every single one of them, every single person, bless them in their ministries, work in their ministries, fill them with your love, fill them with your grace, use them mightily, and may they be blessed and be fruitful in their ministries, Lord, in what they do. Whether it be healing ministry, whether it be singing, or whatever it is, Lord, just bless them and use them in their gifting that they've got, Lord. And uh, Father, we thank you for this day, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your hope. And Lord, we give you the prayers. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And I thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sorry for going on there. Um, it's been a great day. It's been a good day.
like I said, I'm not too well. Still not uh, fully back to strength. Had a great week last week. Fantastic week last week. So many good things happened last week. It was great. And I thank you for everybody's prayer. People have been praying. I've been texting people to pray. And, and God has been answering prayer. God has been moving. And I really appreciate it. So continue to pray. I have plans to go around every town and village in this nation and preach the word of God. I'm off to Wales in a few weeks' time. I'm off to London soon. And I'm, I'm just a desire to proclaim the word of God everywhere. So God bless you and have a lovely day. Take care.